It's now time for another Broken Neck Radio interview. Hello, this is Reckless Ronnie for Broken Neck Radio at the Rock Pile West here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And today I am sitting down having a chat with guitar wizard Mr. Gus G. You might know his music from Mystic Prophecy, Dream Evil, Night Rage, Arch Enemy, and of course his work with Ozzy Osbourne and his last album Scream. But not to mention his founding band Firewind, which has eight discs, two live solo albums, and now releasing his second solo album, Brand New Revolution. Hi Gus, how are you doing today? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you had a long drive from Ottawa. You've been touring uh, North America with a short tour uh, promoting this new album, Brand New Revolution. And uh, how's the re reception been throughout? Yeah, it's been very good so far. Um, we're playing uh, um, yeah, only 10 shows in North America and going back to basics with this tour basically um, playing a lot of really small venues and intimate shows and it's been a lot of fun uh, good good do you feel that uh, I Am The Fire and Brand New Revolution your two solo albums are in a sense a branching out for you from Firewind and uh, what was the creative writing and recording process like on this yeah exactly it was about branching out and uh, just trying out stuff that I wouldn't normally do with Firewind. That was the whole idea behind it. Uh, and it was cool because I got to uh, co-write with other people, with different songwriters or producers or other musicians. And yeah, it was just a lot of, uh, it, it was, uh, yeah, I learned a lot by doing that. You know, just getting different um, guys on board and uh, different influences and different, uh, um, yeah, just different, uh, different input from, from, uh, from a lot of different talented musicians. So in comparison with your first solo record, uh, was this an easier transition, an, an easier project, you feel? Um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, I think, I, yeah, the first time, the first record, I, was, I didn't really know where, where I was going to go music-wise, so I didn't really have a direction. I just wrote, wrote stuff, and if it felt good and I liked it, I used it. And this, this time around, yeah, it was a little bit easier to handpick the material and what what's what. And uh, there was a few fewer guests on this record as opposed to the first one. Um, and ha actually, part of it was recorded live in a room, like drums and bass. It was so there's a bit more of a raw feeling throughout the record, uh, and it's a bit heavier than the first one. Uh, but other than that, it's more or less the same vein as the first one. Yeah. Yes, to it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, talking about guest uh, talents, you have uh, on the track What Lies Below You, you recruited Eliza Ride on vocals. Is that a song that the two of you collaborated on, or was the song written first, then you thought, sought out the right vocalist? Uh, well, I, I co-wrote that, that song with, um, with a producer in L.A. His name is Matt Dozat, and originally we had somebody else to do the demo vocals for that. And then I reached out to Elise because I really like her voice and I think she, I think she's very special and uh, I really want to do something with her so I reached out and um, I told her hey I have this song that you know, I think you would sound great over that and I sent it to her and she loved it and she sang she sang the song as it was written but but uh, with her own style of course mm -hmm. yeah yeah I noticed a couple songs on a brand new revolution that have a certain sound to them like the track Gone to Stay has a tremendous Black Sabbath vibe with Tony Iommi's great uh, heavy riffage. And on the track One More Try, a definite Ozzy Osbourne sound with that. Now is that something that you've done intentionally? Or um, is it sometimes something that just bleeds into your music? How yeah, you actually, yeah, it's a little bit of both. Well, actually, that, that One More Try song, we, me and Jacob Bunton, we wrote that with the intention of uh, giving it to Ozzy. I at, thought that. at some point, yeah, yeah. Uh, some of these material I was, yeah, I was actually planning on giving it to Ozzy, but uh, it, working on a new project with him has been delayed so many years now because he's busy with Sabbath. So mm -hmm. I've, I've had a lot of material sitting around that I really liked, and I said, well, you know, I can use some of this stuff now. And uh, I mean, I have a vault of riffs and ideas, yeah. so it's not like I'm running short on, on ideas, song ideas. But um, I just love that song the way it came out, and it was there, it was ready, and it was just standing there. And I said to Jacob, I said, you know, let's just put this one on the record. I needed a ballad. So I said, it's a beautiful 
ballad, you know, kind of like a goodbye to romance type of song. That's exactly what I, there's yeah. a bit of phrase there in the chorus. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. So, you know, we just used it for, for this thing and, uh, yeah, and in a way it's kind of cool because it's, you know, it shows a little bit of my influence, obviously, being mm -hmm. in being a part of, of Ozzy's um, band and legacy, so, yeah. So, going forward with your solo releases, are there any other artists that you would like to have featured on upcoming albums? Like in um, the back of your mind? Not really. I mean, right now, I, I would like the next record to be done maybe with one singer instead. Okay. Just have like more of a steady thing, you know. I mean, I collaborate with a lot of guys, you know. I use different guys here in America and a European band. Uh, so it's all very open. It's like nobody's committed to, to the project, you know. Uh, mm. So cool. that's very cool. And then, and skip, you, you know, you, you uh, skip a lot of drama that way. It's mm. just friends hanging out and jamming. But um, I'm thinking of, yeah, for the next solo record to have just one guy sing throughout the whole thing. And you would recruit again Ro um, Rob Rock? For this, for this tour, yeah, we have Rob coming out. He's here with me mm -hmm. singing. Um, Rob was available and um, I've been friends with him for more than 10 years. We go way back. We have actually toured, toured Japan together 12 years ago. And, you know, he doesn't play out a lot out here in the States. He mainly tours in Japan, I think, or some European festivals. So he doesn't really play the U.S. So I thought it was a good opportunity, me and him, to go out there and do this. It's such a, such a short run. Yeah. And uh, once again, you have incredible artwork gracing your album. Uh, who is the artist? Well, it's this guy from Brazil I've been using the last seven, eight years. His name is Gustavo Sazes, and uh, he does my websites, all my mm -hmm. visuals, a lot of the merch and all that stuff. And, yeah, he's been doing... Um, Firewind's artwork since the album uh, The Premonition in 2008, so, yeah. And um, the Firewind emblem, how was that conceived and does it have a personal meaning for you? Well, he, he did it, this, uh, Gustavo did it, and um, I think, I don't know how it was, I think he, he wanted, obviously there's this triangle with those flames on there, but I think, what was he saying? He was telling me that obviously tri the triangle is a symbol of, for fire in alchemy, oh. so I think that's where it comes from. Um, and uh, then, uh, then we kind of like have a similar symbol for me, which is based on the Firewind logo, but it's kind of like reverse, which is for my solo thing, mm -hmm. which is like a, we call it the evil G. It looks like a G. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, your relationship with ESP has been a solid one for many years now, and your signature Gus G and T model is such an incredible design. Were you involved with its inception with the company? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been with them for, yeah. 10 years or more than that now and uh, we've had various models actually designed and the random star guitars and then the eclipse guitars and we've we've done uh, I'm, I'm very hands-on with the design and um, that's cool and and you know I choose all the I mean that, that's what a signature model is all about you mm -hmm. know uh, picking and choosing the right specs for the guitar and they're you know the the way their, their instruments are just, they just speak for themselves, they're just incredible and they play very nice and great sound. Yeah, and even, okay. the, even the, 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 the more affordable lines, the cheaper guitars, they, even they, they're just amazing guitars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really dig the shape of it, it looks so comfortable. Cool. Um, now you um, also have endorsements with Black Star Amps and Seymour Duncan pickups along with HT Blackfire pedals. Is there any new products in the work? Well, we're talking about doing like a little practice amp with Black Star. So let's see if maybe we can make that project happen soon. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. There's not much else going on. We might be bringing out some new guitars soon as well, maybe next year. Right. Yeah. So um, you've done many in-store guitar workshops around the globe. There must be a level of satisfaction teaching, sharing, and inspiring your knowledge with other guitarists. Like um, looking at life on the, when you're on a different circuit, do you, do you mix the two a lot or is it just strictly your, when you go out and do workshops, they're just scheduled that way? It's sometimes it's easier just to do if you're going to go out there and do workshops or clinics, it's just better if you focus at that. Uh, sometimes when I'm on tour, I might have an offer, like I have a day off somewhere and then somebody will just ask me to do a clinic and if I'm there and available, I'll, I'll do it, but it's very rarely that'll happen. Um, yeah, it's it's nice. I, I like it when uh, when people see when when people are happy that and if they learn they get something out of this uh, that, that makes me happy. Cool. 
So, uh, yeah, back in February of this year, Firewind performed on board the 70,000 tons of metal cruise. Was that your first time playing on an ocean liner, and how was the experience? It was actually the second time. We did another cruise back in 2013 in Europe. It was called the Wacken Metal Cruise. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And after that, yeah, we were asked to do 70 tons, 70,000 tons, and we did that, and it was amazing. Like, do you enjoy it? Like, uh, of course, you're a musician performing, but do you enjoy it as a fan when there's other bands there that you see and get checked out or be exposed did. to new bands that maybe you would not have otherwise seen? Or? Oh, yeah, I didn't really look out for new bands, to be honest. I, I tried to relax. The good thing about it is that you can, you know, you have access to your cabin anytime. You can chill out, watch mm. TV, do whatever you want. It's not like in a festival where you have to be going around the mud and the dust and stuff. Yes. But uh, so it's cool in that sense, and I think it's the same for all fans. They can just yeah. relax when they want, and they can catch uh, whatever show they want. Um, but it was a very relaxed atmosphere, and everybody was very nice and polite, and just a lot of fun. And uh, some people party hard. Obviously, I'm not that kind of guy, so mm -hmm. I just did my gigs, and um, I met a lot of fans. It was cool to meet people and then I, I chilled out and it was good. So it sounds like you're looking forward to another one. Oh yeah, if they <laughs> asked me I would definitely do it again. Cool. Um, now that Kelly Sundown is fully committed to his band Darkology and Henning Basie is back in the Firewind fold, how soon do you expect to begin writing for the next album and are there plans for a tour next year? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm already working on the new Firewind album. Um, probably have about seven songs. They're not finished, but they're mostly done. Like, the, um, yeah, most of the arrangements are done. So uh, after I go back from this tour, we, we're going to try and finish it and hopefully record this summer. Uh, we just announced a European tour, actually, mm -hmm. for November. So um, I'm not sure if the album will be finished by then or if it's going to come out after the tour, but we're, we're still working all that stuff out. Depends how fast we are in the studio. Right. Yeah. Okay, so... Um you know, we all know that um, you're Ozzy's main man for guitars. And have you been in contact with Ozzy's camp lately? And uh, what does the future hold for you on that front? Um, I haven't spoken to Ozzy in a couple of months. Uh, he's busy with Sabbath. He's in yeah. Australia, as we speak, I think. Uh, well, we have to wait and see whenever Black Sabbath is done, really. Uh, I know their tour ends in December, but I'm not sure if they're going to do more next year. It's it's all subject to change, you know, so it, it, it really all depends on when they, you know, when they wrap it up and then when they do that, I think I was just going to go back out and do some more stuff. So. And you know, and through the grapevine we hear that, that Ozzy is looking to do another solo album. And, He's been talking about it in yeah. interviews, I've seen that as well online when yeah. he talks about it, so uh, yeah, I, I guess he wants to do another one and uh, hopefully that'll happen next year, let's see, you never know. Well, that's all we can do is hope and uh, look forward to the future. And uh, it's been incredible to meet you and have a chat with you. And uh, do some superb shredding talent tonight, my friend. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you. This is Gus G and Ronnie from Broken Neck Radio.